Hi, welcome to Far From Eden. I'm very excited about today's video. We are going to watch Homath's Mystery Zone. I have seen this in my feed and I have resisted the temptation to watch it in advance. Um, I'm familiar with the woman that he covered. I actually saw that, if you wanna call it a story, saw that story a little bit back, further back. And I saw what that woman said about going up to, like having the man invited to the apartment and then telling him, yeah, you can come up to the apartment, but I'm not gonna, you know, do the bedroom fun with you. And he did, and he was completely a gentleman from what I remember from the story. And then she complains afterwards and she even accuses him of something. And this, this begs the question, it's an, it's an age old question, at least in modern times. And it reminds me of the, that Christmas song, it's cold outside, right? when he's trying to convince her to stay and she's like, I really must go, you know, all that. And it's sort of that, you know, cat and mouse playful, like pursuing the woman, right? That can lead to a whole mess of issues for men in this day and age, false accusations, all kinds of things. So let's get into it. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see what, what Mr. Homath has to say about this let's see okay the things that i look forward to are really weird just realized like, wait a minute i don't think most people think like this okay i want to make sure that i didn't that i don't skip anything in the beginning all right let's go I went on a date with this guy and he was like, it's getting late. Do you want to come back to my place? And I was like, sure, but I'm not going to sleep with you. Okay. Okay. Let's do that again. Cause I don't think I had the sound on in the beginning. So, okay. I am the problem. Wow. Self-awareness. She might be a keeper. Let's find out. I went on a date with this guy and he was like, it's getting late. Do you want to come back to my place? And I was like, sure, but I'm not going to sleep with you. Okay, demonstrating value, making good choices. And he was like, that's totally fine. Just come over. Okay, being supportive, recognizing her needs. That's a good exchange. So I go to his place. He respects my wishes. He's so nice. He cuddles me all night. And I'm like, are you f***ing gay? Oh, yeah, okay. You are the problem. So you said no, but you meant yes. And when he didn't figure it out, that made him weak. This is what I call the mystery zone. It's when women say things that don't match what they want, and they expect you to figure it out. Someone I'm sorry. Wouldn't that put nearly all women in the mystery zone? Because don't we all do that? Like, especially if we think we know what we want, but we really don't. Or our minds can change like the wind blowing. So I don't know, that might question, that might put into question all of his categories, which was, is my only issue. Well, no, it's not my only issue with home math. Uh, he doesn't talk about like morality and I mean, purity is important, but why, right? Uh, yeah, so putting women, again, it's like the hot crazy matrix. I mean, they you can put them here, you can, you know, there's your dot. That's how crazy and how hot you are. But like you're, it's gonna move as far as crazy goes. So how reliable is the data? If you don't know, if you can never know if she means what she's saying, how can you ever know what level she would be in? Wouldn't that always wouldn't you have to put her in the mystery zone by default? I don't know. Maybe he addresses that. One made this cartoon about it. Are you flirting with me? Not one bit. Does saying not one bit so seductively mean you actually are flirting with me? <laughs> not at all. What the hell is happening right now? 
That is exactly how the Mystery Zone works. That is what she probably did. Bill Burr also has a famous bit on that. He's not the only one. So first of all, I've been told that she is a comedian and that this is a joke. So please refer to my previous work on jokes. There's this one and then there is Abby's Perfect Man. That was a good one. I haven't seen those. Oh my God. How did I not see those? Oh, we got to do those too. It may very well be a joke, but that doesn't mean that they don't mean it. The joke is, I'm not supposed to say it out loud. So to be really quick about it, every joke needs a target. That's what gets punched. That's why they call it a punchline. And every joke needs an example of doing it wrong. So if your target is something that your audience is okay with you punching, and the thing you're doing wrong is something that your audience can tolerate you doing wrong, you're more likely to get a laugh. Her target is herself, I am the problem, and her doing it wrong is, I am playing dangerous games. I am saying no when I mean yes, because when I get what I want anyway, it's more fun than when I say yes and mean yes. It doesn't mean she meant yes. This was my issue with this whole thing with this woman. And women saying this, I mean, this is not just her. She just brought it out, right? Just because she said no and then wished he had made a move doesn't mean that she wanted to do anything. She just wanted to know that he wanted to do it with her. I know. It's really, really messed up. She wanted to be desired. It doesn't mean she wanted to like participate or do whatever. She might very well may have said, no, I said no, I told you no. But she wanted the opportunity. Look at this, okay. She wanted the opportunity to reject him. And it wasn't because it was, it's fun to reject him. It's it's pleasurable to the woman to be desired, to be pursued. It doesn't mean she wants to do the deed. It means she really wants him to want it. To the point where he might, you know, get a little uh, persuasive. Now you might be thinking, well, as a man, how would I know what to do then? What should I do then? Don't go upstairs with her. As soon as she's like, oh, would you like to come upstairs? But I don't want to do anything. You say, you're right. It's probably too soon for that. I've had a lovely evening. Hope to see you again. Good night. Shake hands. That's the move. Because as soon as you go upstairs and she's like, Okay, but I don't want to do that. Da, 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 da. If you go upstairs and there are these like, she's set the terms and da, 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 da. She's already begun to manipulate you. It's already a sort of a trap. And the thing that men don't realize is that it is a trap and that the manipulation has begun. You are in the web. You know, you're the fly in the web. And as soon as you think you can figure her out. Like she said, no, but she wants me to come upstairs. So maybe if I do this, she definitely likes me. Da, 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 da. Don't do that. That's you struggling in the web, getting tangled up. When a fly goes into a web, right? They don't realize that, you know, what's happening. That's their first time or they wouldn't exist. And that's what men do when they start to uh, participate in these games, basically. You say, oh, you can come upstairs, but I don't have sex. Okay, well, what does that mean? I don't know. Don't. Don't play that, right? You've got to set the terms. You've got to say, ah, oh, it seems like a bit of a manipulation. And in my opinion, that's a, she, I, I don't want to say it could be a keeper because I'm like, eh, make town is the safest bet. But she's starting to play games already if she says something like that. And you're not going to win in that. 
you're just going to struggle in the web. And why would you want to be caught by a black widow spider? You don't. Here's a last minute edit. She's saying it's more fun for me to put men through this, which confuses them, which results in no one knows what means what. That's why they came out with these enthusiastic consent laws a few years ago. It's apparently pretty complicated. Here's a three-year-old post. I feel dirty for opening Reddit. It says, is enthusiastic consent a heightened standard of consent or is it a pleonasm, whatever that is? It gets academic. So these laws are intended to simplify all of this down to just this. It's either a very clear yes or it's a no. And then you don't have to worry about ending up in any of these bad boxes because she said no and meant no, but you thought she meant yes because you are used to girls who say no and mean yes and you don't know. And again, promiscuity, right? We don't, just because we live in a world where promiscuity is what everybody seems to be participating in, do you see why? It's not a good, it's not a good thing. And it's not just biblical, it is biblical, but it's practical. There was a time when people waited for marriage. It was very, you know, we, we didn't have all this business. So there weren't these opportunities to play with men's brains and hearts, right? It, those, that protected everybody. And it wasn't a law, it was our culture. I love how if I talk like this, you get some lefties and some you know, atheist types that are like, oh, you're gonna bring in Sharia law. I don't want Sharia law, I'm not Muslim, why would you think that? And Christian Sharia law, we never had that. We just had a Christian culture. Anyway, I don't wanna get sidetracked, but you see the mess we're in? If you, the man, actually, Take control of the sex portion of the relationship. Stop letting the women be the gatekeepers. They can't be the gatekeepers if you lock your gate. Right? I know, I know that men have, you know, strong urges and desires and want that release. I get it. But is it really worth it with all this mess? And you could take control and say, no, thank you. I had a lovely time, but I don't think we're quite there yet. And you might say, well, well, then what if she, what if she doesn't want a second date or she's not good? Then you've weeded her out. You're gonna have to, if you decide you're going to date in this environment, you have to be prepared to weed them out. And you're going to have to be the gatekeeper. As soon as you start participating with the woman um, in a physical way, she can use that to manipulate you. And she will. When you allow her to be the gatekeeper of the bedroom fun, why would you do that? Why would you be like, oh, goody, she's going to let me. Don't you see what that leads to? That gives her the upper hand. That gives her the ability to control you. And you start to think a little bit more like, ooh, I hope I get some. And so you start changing your behavior to, I don't want to make her mad because I want to. Then you're, you're bowing down to her already. You're giving up all of your power where the lines are and it would be great if we could simplify it down to this but writing laws does not make women choose to communicate this way they still choose to play these games because it's more fun so writing and because they can take that power away from them a law doesn't actually prevent anyone from ending up in any of these bad boxes. They just create more punishments when they happen. Don't do this. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you the simplest way to learn the skill of dealing with this nonsense. If you like learning new skills in a simple way, you should try Shortform, the sponsor of this video. Shortform is an easier way to learn new things.
metaphysics and to discover and understand major points like the two systems of the mind. Shortform publishes new book guides and articles every week, it. and as a member, you get to vote on which ones. They even have their own AI browser extension to summarize articles and videos at the click of a button. Click my link in the video description to sign up. If you're in the first 500, you'll get... I don't want to skip any of the videos, so I'm hesitant to press L to go forward a again. A free trial with unlimited access and 20% Talk amongst yourselves. Do you remember that Saturday Night Live skit? Off membership. So act fast. If you want access to one of the most powerful forms of learning I've seen, use the link in the video description for a free trial and 20% off. So why do women choose this? Let's ask her. I wasn't going to sleep with him. I, but I just, now I feel ugly. I just wanted him to like try and then for me to be like, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. What you mean is, hey, buddy don't try it but i secretly want you to try a little but only up to a certain point and if you get past that point that's going to be bad for you but i'm not going to tell you what that point is mm -hmm. i'm going to tell you not to try but i want you to try up to a certain point and if you cross that point your life is over and if you don't get close enough to that point i'm going to tell everyone in the group chat what you mean is that you love chaos which is typical the feminine principle is she wants to control you. And yeah, of course, they, he's right. She she loves chaos. She, she's looking she's looking to create it. Look, because that would have been more chaos. It would have been like, oh, da, 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 da. And, uh, but it's control at the end of the day. She's, she's looking to control you with her, with her um, sexuality, with her beauty, with her whatever. She wants to use your desire for her against you. Is the dark principle in most spiritual systems. It's receptive, it's chaotic, whereas the masculine principle is orderly and light and direct. It's assertive and receptive. It works like a battery, one feeds into the other. The more feminine she is, the more she wants life to happen to her. She wants you to make things happen. She wants you to say what is going to happen next. She doesn't want to tell you what to make happen that's where we get isn't that interesting because if the woman wants to have life happen to her and you tell her i mean you guys can think i'm completely crazy but doesn't that remind you of say a good housewife that the husband, you know, brings home the money and says, this is the way that I believe and this is how the children will be raised. And, you know, that sounds like that dynamic to me would fit right into his description of the masculine and the feminine working together. Who, what do I know? these areas where she says nothing but wants something or when she says or does something that doesn't match what she wants because if she comes out and just says very clearly i want this to happen well then everyone wins but it's also safer which is less fun because she doesn't get to be receptive she had to say what was going to happen she wants you to do that and i know someone is going to say not everyone's like that everyone's different and that's kind of true but not really <laughs> Most women are very feminine and are looking for men who are masculine and dominant. There are more masculine women. I have met them. They don't do very much of this. They just kind of say, here's what's happening. Here's what's not happening. And then you go, okay, great. And there's there isn't very much of this. But most women are not like that. Most women will communicate like this or not at all. And they want you to say, here is what is happening now. And you need to be correct about what she wanted whether she said it or not just stop thinking about what she want. i realize this is the dynamic of the um you know the bedroom stuff but men need to stop thinking about what the woman wants so they can make the woman like them just be amazing you know, just develop yourself, work on yourself, be amazing. Know that you're, know that you're a worthy man, know that you're valuable and stop kowtowing to all these women. Of course, you're not going to take advantage of them. You're not going to, 
if you're if you're not promiscuous, if you're not all the time looking to, you know, get some get some uh, we'll call it nookie. <laughs> That's an old one. I don't think YouTube knows that word. If you're always looking to get some nookie, you're led by that and you compromise. And you forget that you're valuable. And so always thinking, well, what does she want? What does she mean? Da, 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 da. That's not your job. You know, and you're if you're doing it because you're trying to figure out how to please her so that she will sleep with you, you're in the web. You're in the web. If you're more orderly, and that is masculine, you say, I am not just going to go and, you know, sleep with you because you're, you're looking to use that. And that's where you have to be careful. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that she's a good woman, obviously, right? And if she is, if you think she's a good woman, then wait, keep vetting her. Don't get yourself involved um, physically because you won't think straight. So how do you do that? Yeah, we don't know either. That's why they have websites explaining it for college students in Australia, I guess. The website provides five core concepts of consent in case you want to bring notes. And it breaks down seeking and receiving consent into verbal and reading body language, which doesn't solve any problems. Because if she's playing dangerous games, if her words and intentions don't match, you can't solve that problem by saying, please tell me what happens now. Please take this role and say what happens next. This is what she's trying to do. You can't be this. And reading body language is just reading her mind. It's just figuring these out. That yeah. was the original problem. We don't speak body language. Imagine going to court and saying, but your honor, she nodded and. She can lie with her body language. Women will trap you. They will act seductive like they want you to lure you in. So you will pursue and make a move. And that at some point that you can't know, she's going to be like, no, that's too much. And she's going to say it in a way that you're like, do you really mean too much or what do you mean? What game are we playing? I should find that Bill Burr video. That Bill Burr, oh my God, he does a great piece on this. And smiled. That's really missing the point. People write these pages and pages of instructions because they're trying to create cognitive, logical processes to make up for emotional skills that a lot of young men just don't have. A lot of old ones too. So knowing what to do with these strategies comes from experience. It does not come from reading words on a screen. Exactly. Although you should read the screen, it's better than nothing. So if you don't have experience and you think you're being messed with, you need to know what are your options. Please notice that these are the good choices on these diagonals and these are the bad choices on these diagonals. Please Just say no. <laughs> Because you're probably being messed with. If you're not sure if you're being messed with, just err on the side if you're being messed with. I know that it's so hard. There's there's so many men who are invisible to women, just invisible. And I know you guys are like, you do the shotgun of, um, effect, like on Tinder and dating sites and whatever, because you're like, maybe someone will say yes, right? But that's, think about that for a second think about what that means like you're just hoping for a yes from whomever and whatever we've got to change we've got to change that somehow we've got to have men know that they don't need to beg you know what i mean the shotgun effect is like oh my god nobody wants me so maybe if i just ask everybody. That's a terrible place to, to start from. And to, to think that you have to play these games, that you have to figure out what box, you don't. Um, and it's 
not going to lead to a good thing, you're better off finding a woman that you actually know from something and developing a relationship with her. I know you're probably like, how? There's no way. Then, then don't, because this is a, is a disaster waiting to happen. Look at all these pitfalls. This is why I'm always like, make tell. These, this, this is just, it's all a trap. Gotta, you know, if you're from a big city or like any city, you gotta look more in the small towns. You gotta find a farm girl, you know, somebody who grew up with some responsibilities, somebody who grew up knowing their grandparents and understanding, you know, morals and, you know, stuff like that. It's going to be difficult, needle in a needle stack. But this business, this is just a trap. I mean, if how desperate are you to, you know, have, you know, have bedroom fun? What is it worth to you? Is it worth an unplanned pregnancy from some chick that you would never do that on purpose with? Is it worth a false accusation? Is it worth um, con contracting a disease? Because I think I've heard the statistics, one in three women, and if you think she's gonna tell you, you're wrong. Just please think about protecting yourself before you go diving into all this mess. And hopefully that's part of what this helps with, is to know that it's not as simple as you guys think men are, as home math shows, Men are very organized in their thinking as you compare it to the way women think. We organize in a different way, uh, which I think you guys are probably laughing at that right now, but we do, we organize in our own different way. It's more like organized chaos. Uh, and you guys want things just so, but with us, everything is fluid. So our minds change, our feelings change, et cetera, all the time. So we're constantly moving around on that chart and, and in these boxes. And he can do something or act a certain way that we change our minds. You got it. You guys have to be the ones that are like, no, no. What if all the men started just taking away that gatekeeping power that the women have? And they were like, because y'all are the gatekeepers of relationship. What if you were like, you know what? I'm not going to do that with anybody that I don't want a long-term relationship with. Let's just say, I know that's not what everybody wants, but let's say that all men did that. And all men made it clear that they don't want 304s, that they don't want, you know, what if, what if that all got out and men just started abstaining from this casual business? Women wouldn't be able to play these games, would they? No, they wouldn't. If you take that gatekeeping power away from them, or they're the gatekeepers of sex, guess what? You've taken their power. They can't do all this business. They can't falsely accuse you as easily. Obviously, your wife still can. You know, not that I, I'm not a proponent of government marriage at all. Uh, but I'm just saying, imagine a world. <laughs> We're in the twilight zone now, people. But imagine the world where you guys were like, no, we're taking that whole, you know, physical stuff off the table. We're not doing that. We're not allowing you that control. I think things would change. And what if you just did that in your own life and you started really having standards? You know, y'all need to have the standards. Women are out here going, he has to be this, and he has to be this, and he has to be this. You need to say, nope. You know? Say it loud. I'll say it for you. Because I know nobody listens to you guys. And everyone just twists what you say into something misogynistic. I mean, they call me that too, but... I'm still going to be the voice of y'all. And this isn't good for women either. They're not happy. 
like we said, one in three with a with a, a disease and all these unplanned pregnancies and single motherhood, that's not good for them either, right? Somebody's going to have to say, we got to stop this. Please also notice that these bad choices where you go home or say no are way preferable to these bad choices. I put skulls on them. So if she says no, but still wants you to try and you don't. Are you gay? And if she says yes and means yes and you don't, then that's just her problem. But I just, now I feel ugly. And if she says nothing and wants you to try, then it's why don't men get hints? These are all very tolerable compared to these. Okay, are you frustrated yet? Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. <sighs> okay, this <laughs> seems like a lot. It seems complicated. Women sometimes will withhold communication or say the opposite of what they mean on purpose in order to test you and see if you can read yeah. their minds, which of course you cannot, otherwise we wouldn't be here. And it can lead to this whole grid of possible outcomes that are very difficult to calculate in the moment. And Can women read their own minds? Do women know what they really want? It's fluid. Y'all, if you were reading our minds, you'd be like, this isn't helpful. <laughs> you'd be like, no, I don't want to. If you could, for a second, peek into our minds, you would be like, get me out of here. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's such a big recurring issue that every generation of comedians keeps coming up with their own material about it. And I don't know if you remember this song from 11 years ago. I'm still mad about this. The song is called Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke. And he tried to use it to address this whole minefield, but then everyone kind of attacked him. So he sort of just stepped on a mine. But you don't... Hold on. Hold on right there. I have something to say about that song. Women loved that song i love that song when it came out this is this was 11 years ago this is actually pre-red pill right i heck was that when i voted for obama goodness gracious how long was that though you know uh i use that because then it's like okay you know how out of it i was that song was so popular because it was so hot and so was Fifty Shades of Grey. All the same sort of a theme. Very, very, very popular. Women like to be pursued. We like that. That turns us on. The idea of someone desiring us so much and it's kind of like shouldn't be. That is very hot to women. It just is. And it's funny, I think that song, you know, like, oh, people started, you know, saying that was so bad and then they took it off. I think that was the establishment because women loved that song. I remember this, this, uh, she was kind of a friend. She had a, a young daughter who rode horses with me. I was a riding instructor back then. I remember her saying, this is my song. And I thought, and I made a mental note of it because I still thought, I still had the same brain, obviously. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And I loved it. I would crank it up in my car and I would sing along, but I never told anybody. You know, it was sort of like, I kind of knew I shouldn't like it, but I did. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys the female perspective on that song, but it was very, very popular. It was not this whole like, grassroots movement to take it down and take him down because Robin Thicke just fell from grace after that. And it was partly his little dance with Miley Cyrus or whatever, but still it wasn't because women didn't like that song. They liked it. I think the establishment, the overlords were like, uh oh, we can't, we can't have this dynamic because they want to separate the men and women. That's what this is really about. It's having the women think that the men are the enemy and, you know, destroy them, basically. Not that women are out there saying, I'd like to destroy men. We're just kind of doing it because we're following our programming and going and being girl bosses and emasculating them and doing this to them, giving them mixed messages and then accusing them and, and then just completely ignoring most of them and 
<sighs> yeah, goes on and on. But that is what, you know, the people up here, the people whose names we don't know, they want us apart. They want to break up the family. They want us looking at each other as the enemy. Because then you won't really look at who the real enemy is. don't have to do that. I'm going to reduce this whole thing to a two by two grid. I like grids. And then if you end up here, a subsequent two by two grid, and then one weird trick to start understanding body language, if you don't already, because okay. let's face it, if men could read a set okay. of instructions like this and understand what it means by providing another visual affirmative cue, then this wouldn't be a multi-generational point of contention. You should read the instructions anyway. They're just not comprehensive. But first, here are the simplified instructions. Okay, we no longer live in a cohesive society that maintains stable relationships. We live in an unholy sex tornado where people make whatever choices they want. And if you try to tell them not to do that, they scream at you. Usually it's something like this. And usually they look something like that. If you are a man who has any kind of success in the tornado, you will probably encounter some women who play games. They will either not say what they're thinking or say the opposite of what they're thinking and then expect you to make the correct guess. This can be very confusing, but it doesn't have to be. First of all, forget about what you don't know. This is a good rule for everywhere in life. Why would you worry about what someone is thinking but not saying? That's like worrying that maybe there's a meteor hurtling towards you right now. You don't know that. Why would you worry? So what exactly. do you know? You know what she is saying to you and what she is doing with her body. In this story, she said, I'm not going to sleep with you, but then she put her body in his bed. He didn't try anything, and she was mad. He made the right choice. That's this box right here. We'll get to that one last. First of all, a verbal no and a body language no is always a no that should not require additional explanation. Second of all, a verbal yes, but a body language no is also a no. This is another good rule for life in general. It's very easy to lie with your words. It's very difficult to lie with your actions. If people say one thing and do another, trust what they do. She's not into it. Bail out. Third of all, if she says yes and her body language is yes, it's usually okay to proceed unless she's intoxicated. But finally, if she says no but is acting like yes, you get to this box here, which can confuse some people, and there's no reason for that to be. To explain why, I have expanded this box. So if she's saying no but acting like yes, oh my god, stop, don't, you have two choices. You can try something or go home. Now, if you go home and she wanted you to do something, she might call you gay. So I get called gay a thousand times a day. Actually, they usually say incel, but it's a very similar level insult. And I sleep like a baby. So what? Go home. If you go home and she didn't want you to do anything, nothing happens. No good things and no bad things happen. Neutral. If you try something and she wanted you to try something... What are you going to get? Are you going to get a, a wife and the mother of your children? No. You're going to get a random sweaty hookup, and it might not even be that good. On the other hand, if you try something and you were wrong and she didn't want you to, I've drawn you a tiny little nuclear explosion to simulate what might happen to your life. Don't do this. So the reason people are confused and keep writing songs about this is because they think winning this game means either ending up here or... If you end up here, knowing when to make the right call. But even if you do make the right call, what are you getting? A woman who plays games. What do you want that for? So exactly. the real winning move is to go home, let her say whatever she wants, and find a better woman later. So we'll Amen to that. Do not play her games. Why do you think you have to? You don't. You're worth more than that. Don't take that risk. It's really not worth it, as he so eloquently said. We'll just put a red X in this box, too. Don't mess with girls that play games. That means the only box you're looking for is the verbal yes and the mm -hmm. body language yes. But mm -hmm. if you don't understand how to read body language, 
what good is it to read yeah. a list that says seeking consent can look like reading body language with a list of examples. So these games wouldn't be games if everyone knew what was going on. Women tend to think that men know what they're thinking uh, more than we really do. Yeah. And they will yeah. always say things like, well, why don't men get hints? And then their hints are just like, they'll look at you real quick and look away, even <laughs> though they also do that to guys they don't like. And uh. people shouldn't do this. They should communicate clearly. Okay, I will say this. The reason, here it's an insight. The reason women think that women, that men should understand their hints and that basically they kind of expect men to read their minds is because we kind of have that with other women. I've noticed that when I say, talk to a woman on the phone, like one of a, like a female friend that I have, like the, the one, the one or two that I have, and I talk to her on the phone and then I talk to a man on the phone the man will be like, wait, we just skipped. And I'm like, oh, oops. Because when I'm talking to the woman, there's, I, she just, there are just things that we just know because women get on the same wavelength and we know what we're talking about. We know what we mean. And when a woman talks to a man, that's not there. You have to tell the man all the things in, in say a story. There's no skipping and assuming. He, he won't understand, he won't just get it. There's just so many things that, that women, and like with a girlfriend, you can look, you can do like a, and we know what we mean. We know the difference between like that look and that look, like the littlest things based on the circumstance, based on everything, we know what we mean between women. We can communicate like this. We don't get it that men don't just get on the same wavelength that we're on and figure it out and understand. So it's, in a way, it's not, obviously, it's not okay to just think that the man should be able to read your mind because that's sort of an entitled thing. Like, well, you should just know. When they say you should just know, that's because her girlfriend would know. Because we're women and we know. Whatever it is we're thinking or talking about, we get it. And men are just different. That doesn't mean they're bad. They're just not women. And it also doesn't mean that they don't have emotions, that they don't have feelings, that their hearts can't be broken, because women will assume that. Because men don't communicate any moat like women, we assume y'all don't have feelings like we do, that you can't get hurt, that you don't have a deep sacrificial love for people. You absolutely do. I would, I would argue more than, than us, but, but that's, that's where that happens. That's why women think, you know, what we're thinking because we communicate with you in a way that our girlfriend would totally know what we mean and you don't have any idea. So that's where that comes from. And you know, it would be nice if we could just explain that to all women and they would go, Oh, Oh, that makes sense. And then kind of change the way they communicate. But it doesn't seem like a lot of women want to stop, reflect, and adjust. Um, it's, it would be like admitting they did something wrong and we just can't have that, can we? <laughs> and if they don't, you should usually leave. But they're also not gonna stop doing these things, especially not overnight. So your only option is to get better at discerning this from this. A lot of guys don't like this and they say, I'm not a mind reader. I don't know what you're thinking until you tell me. And you're not wrong. It's just that when you say that, you are asking women to learn to communicate differently while you are not learning to communicate differently. And that's not how you make your life better. You have to do some of the work.
Earlier, I promised you one weird trick for doing that. Here it is. Lists like these will say, just read body language, bro. Just check for signs. And that doesn't always work because this is an emotional skill. You cannot read it off a list. Men are usually in their heads, the logical part. They're thinking about words and reading lists. Women are usually more in the feelings, the what do I want part of being human and uh, where do I fit in? Who am I? What's going on here? So as a man, you're going to need to use your head to get into your feelings. This is a skill that takes time. You are bringing your subconscious mind into your conscious mind by checking on it. So when you are in a situation where you do not know what someone else is feeling, stop using reason and logic and ask yourself, does this person feel more like they are watching the waiter bring out appetizers or more like they are watching the cops bring a speeding ticket? because the behaviors can look quite the same. They might be sitting patiently, smiling politely, they might say thank you, but the emotional experience is very opposite. This is desirable, this is not. Your job is to know when you are the waiter and you are the cop. And it's gonna take time. You're gonna be slowly piping your subconscious thoughts into your conscious mind. And even if you get good at it, you will not always know what's happening, but that's okay because that means you're dealing with someone who isn't telling you. And then there's only one good choice anyway. Another problem solved forever. You're welcome. All you have to do is forget about mind reading and making guesses. Focus on what you do know, like words and actions. If you are having trouble interpreting the actions, Use the cop waiter trick to get out of your head and into your emotional processing. And if you still don't know what's going on, then don't roll the dice on this. These are not equivalent outcomes. And that's how you avoid women who know that they are the problem. Wow. Wow. No, 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 no. I paused you. You stop it. You stop. Is it stopped? Sorry, <laughs> I talk to my computer. I don't know if it helps. <laughs> wow, oh, like usual, after a whole math video, my brain is full. He's right there at the end. He's absolutely right. Yeah, don't, don't mess with a woman who's playing games. And it's not worth it if you can't read her why are you trying to read her? Like, that's just playing the game. And, and you will end up with that nuclear explosion, you know? And it's not worth it. Like he said, you are worth more than that. You really are. And uh, if men start acting like they are not going to play games and they're not going to, and they say, no, I'm not going to sleep with you. Imagine. I don't think you guys get how much how adaptable women are, really. We are very, uh, there's a reason why politicians basically gear their campaigns towards women. They do, and what do I mean by that? They appeal to emotion, right? They appeal to emotion, fear. You've got, uh, we'll take the whole migrant thing. We'll take both sides oh my gosh, those people are coming here and they're committing crimes and they're taking all the jobs and it's going to be awful and da, 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 fear. And then the other one is, oh my gosh, what if we don't help those people, those poor people, something bad could happen to them. They deserve this fear. Again, it's all this emotion. Imagine if we got a home math video about politics and it was just like, here's the categories, you know, because the politicians want people to feel stuff. Well, that's not exactly appealing to the men, is it? So politicians by and large appeal to women because they can and because we are pers very easily persuaded. Again, back to the garden. We are far from Eden, yet we keep seeing the same dynamic play out. Women are, you know, easily tempted. And so what I'm saying is if the men stop playing this game and they start having standards for themselves, women want men. They do. 
imagine if the men took the control. What it would be really great is if these men who are tens and nines suddenly became very moral and didn't have a bunch of women. What if they all just got one woman? And then there were then there would be more women for all the men, like there used to be. I don't think they're I don't know. I don't think that that's going to fulfill them, you know, having their harems. I think they're enjoying things physically, but fulfillment wise, no. It's certainly not going to be good for those women that are in that harem. Short term, sure. Long term, no. No. But it's the men that can change it and the women will adapt. That's why MIGCHAO is so great, because it's like going on strike until conditions improve. And when the women can't find the men, where are all the good men, et cetera, they're going to start figuring out, well, how do I get one? You know what? I now, when I shop online for a dress, it is so much easier to find a conservative, pretty, like, sundress. That used to be difficult about five years ago. They were all really short, the necklines. I would always have to use a safety pin, close it up. You know, it was always like that. And now there's a whole different like fashion as, as far as I don't know about Paris and all that. But like as far as like just your normal person, it's easier to shop for something that's feminine and conservative now which tells me that women are wanting that and shopping for that. Why? Because it must be something that the men want. I know that women are going to be like, no, that's the way I dress. I dress for myself. Baloney. No, you don't. It's a lie. I'm sorry. It's a lie. If you're dressing for yourself. That's the sweatpants. Okay. That's a sweatpants and t-shirt because that's very comfortable. That's probably what you get into when you're about to watch like your Netflix crime shows if you're a female. You're not there in your dress or whatever you claim is, you know, for you. That's display. And yes, they do it for other women too. But why? Because you're competing with them. For what? Men. It's age old. It is, it is how we're wired. The overlords can try to mess with it with the propaganda and everything. They can keep trying to mess with it, but it's always going to try to revert to how we were made. That's why women, like, we still want men all the time. Obsessed with it, right? Boy crazy. You still see that. I know it's confusing to you guys, but what it should tell you is that you actually do have the power. Got it. He man, <laughs> but you do. You just have to take it. You actually do have the power, more power than you guys realize. This is just like a, a mind game right now, but you guys can just be like, no, I'm done. I don't want to do this. I'm not playing your game. You know, come talk to me when you're done playing. Take sex off the table. Then you remove most of her tools of manipulation. To me, that sounds like a great solution. Not an entire solution, but a great first step towards a solution. Take away the, their ability to manipulate you. Be, be, you know, strong in your convictions and know your value, you know? Work on yourself, you know, work out, eat right, feed your soul. You know, study great writers. Um, protect your peace. And all this mind reading and everything, that's an invasion of your peace. And your peace is so important. There are too many men uh, without peace deciding to uh, end themselves or just being outright depressed. And, and, and part of that is because of being victims of this gynocentrism that, you know, kind of starts with this, um, these games that the women play. Don't give them that power. 
thank you for watching that with me. That was so fun. He is, he's so smart and I love the way he breaks things down. I hope that I was able to add something to it. Maybe do some woman's explaining, like translate what the women are thinking and why they do what they do and that kind of a thing. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. I hope that you're protecting your peace. I hope that you found a way to feed your soul today. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Bye.